Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. A stray dog faces incredible odds on the way to being placed in her final forever home. An ukulele virtuoso takes a gamble with a major life decision. A key figure in Hawaiian history is honored every year at the country's oldest school west of the Rockies. Discover a bit of World War II history embedded in a windward Oahu hillside. Learn how to make a painting with Molokai red dirt. Meet a saxophonist about to enter the country's premier jazz school. And catch up with a pair of long distance running brothers who team up in a unique way. All in this episode of Hiki no, coming to you from Kalama Intermediate School on Maui, home of the Panthers. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network, Hiki no. Can do! We're here in Makawao, Maui, Kalama Intermediate School. We have many artworks. This sculpture culmination greets all who enter. The artist Matthew Salinger, who grew up in upcountry Maui, worked with students and faculty to create ideas for the artists in the school project. In the center of the sculpture, the demigod Maui is slowing down the sun. The left side represents the first Polynesian settlers. On the right are items brought by the later settlers. Across the top are images that convey the history and culture of upcountry Maui. Culmination is meant to represent all that has come before and what is yet to come. Our first story takes us to the leeward side of Oahu, where students at Evo Makai Middle School follow a dog's amazing journey to her final forever home. We took Stella and her puppies in the afternoon and by that evening, the puppies had taken a turn for the worst. I honestly believe that if we hadn't taken them that day, they would have all passed. Working alongside with other companies around Oahu, Fur Angels makes it a point to help all the stray dogs they find out on the streets. Volunteers at Fur Angels work to find each and every canine their own and unique forever homes, and one of these dogs was Stella. We were contacted by hashtag Speak Up Movement, uh, who organized a bunch of different local nonprofit organizations to help out with the Nimitz 100 situation. Stella was part of the Nimitz 100 situation where there were a number of homeless encampments under the Nimitz Bridge and they were being relocated and so about 100 animals needed to be placed into foster care and find new homes. So Stella was part of that situation. Underneath the Nimitz Bridge in Honolulu on the island of Oahu, there were lots of homeless encampments with many dogs who needed immediate care. And at the time, she had just had a litter of puppies all of which had parvo, which is a very deadly virus for puppies. And so she went directly into foster care with her pups. Uh, we found out that her puppies were in fact sick, so they went directly to the hospital and stayed there for a number of days. Parvovirus is a life-threatening disease which kills about 15% of all puppies that get diagnosed. When Stella's puppies were first born, her angel caretakers noticed that the pups seemed to lack energy and appetite. This led to further research and concluded that all were diagnosed with parvo. From the litter, only two out of four survived. We decided to take Stella and her puppies because my fosters were able to take her and her four puppies at the time. It is a big undertaking taking a, a mother and her pups, but they were willing to take her. They're very eager. I think that we all knew that they needed help immediately, especially with the puppies. They're very vulnerable. And so we all felt that it was necessary to take them all at the, that time. And then once she was adopted, she transitioned very well to her new family. So it's been a couple months since she's been adopted and she's doing wonderful in her new home. But this isn't where the story ends. After finding new homes for each dog, Tiffany Kim and the team at Fur Angel Foundation make sure to keep in touch with all of the families to ensure all dogs have found their true forever home. As of 2018, Fur Angels has helped about 160 dogs on the island of Oahu, and the public can help them too. You can contact us through our website, www.furangelfoundation.org, or we're also on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. With the help and support of the foster, adoptive families, and volunteers, Fur Angels works hard to help our community. However, their work is far from over as there are many dogs who still need help. This is Ayana Sabuka from Evan Mackay Middle School for Hiki No. 
Iki Knows now on Instagram. For short updates and a peek behind the scenes, follow us on Instagram at Hiki no Can Do. Our next story takes us to the Manoa District of Oahu, where students at Mid-Pacific profile an ukulele virtuoso who decided to take a different path in his life and career. In order for you to succeed, you need to be a risk taker. Mentored by Jake Shimabukuro and Roy Sakuma, Jody Kamisato has a gift, a gift which he uses to inspire others. I think that's part of our, our mission, is to, to perpetuate um, the love of this instrument, the ukulele, and the aloha. Jody is an ukulele teacher who enjoys what he does, but his career path wasn't always certain. I kind of fell into to music and teaching and performing and, um, you know, it, there, were, there was a few hurdles in between. You know, from 2002 to 2007, we were teaching as ukulele essence, so it was Bruce and I. And then in 2007, another company basically wanted to take over. It would have been really the easy way out for me to just continue doing what I love to do, but basically I would be an employee of this company. Or have the option of starting my own company and my own school. I really had a vision for my school and ultimately I didn't want to compromise my vision and mission. It was it's stressful and I was like, wow, you know, I got to make a living, but how am I going to do this? You know, I talked to a lot of friends, a lot of family, and they said, you know, you have to do what you love to do and, and really find it in your heart. And don't listen to the people that say you're not going to make it in music or you're not going to be successful. And there was something inside me saying, you know what, just, just do it, Jody. You got to do it. And if you don't try, you'll never know. So I decided to open my own school in 2007 called Ukulele Hale. Luckily, uh, the students who, were, who I was teaching um, stuck along and supported me. And you know, we, we went from 45 students over the years uh, to, to now about 250 students, where we have five instructors, including myself. He knows he made the right decision in his life, following his passion, taking a risk, and persevering. You know, I'm not making millions of dollars, but I'm excited to come to work, you know? This is Nicholas Hasegawa from Mid-Pacific for Hikino. We're back here in Makawao in Green Up Country, Maui, at Kalama Intermediate School. Among the many clubs at Kalama, the Future Homemakers of America is made up of foodies who, among other things, like to learn and practice various baking skills. Students not only learn these skills, they are also preparing to showcase them at the Spring Bake Off. Students bake at home and have an hour to decorate their goodies at school. Judges then choose the winners with a $50 prize at stake. A fun experience for students to interact and do what they love. Eating. I mean baking. For our next story, we'll remain on Maui on the west side of the island where students at Lahaina Luna High School document the tremendous amount of preparations that go into the annual celebration of their most revered graduate. It really has been a, a long journey because since the inception in 1969, you know, we're looking at over 40 years of, of, of having a program run every year. Um, David Molliday, to me, is a big way for the whole community to get together, especially Lahaina Luna's alumni. They really like to come out and support the kids, especially those that were in Hawaiiana Club when they were in high school. So the day before, we all get together and we help make the lao lao, we prep the food. The process of it is taking the raw pork and rolling it in the kalo leaves, and then you roll them in the tea leaves, and you wrap them in foil. And then when we're all done, we make 800 lao laos, and after we're done, we take them all up to the imu, up towards the back of our school, and we fire them. 
so in preparation for the next day. The day of, everybody wakes up really early and we all come to the school and help set everything up, like the tables, the stage, um, get any last minute things together, like lays or pick last minute flowers that we need. And then we get to go home and take a shower because it's been hot all day. When we come back, we get our stuff together in the dressing rooms and get ready. And once we're all ready, as a halal, we all walk down to the bottom of the school in the chorus room. We all stand in a circle and get out like last minute jitters or any nervous butterflies and we say a prayer wishing us good luck. My favorite part of Deva Malo Day is the hula dancing because I love it so much. It's probably the one thing that's worth all of the work is the dancing and the performing for everyone and getting to share all the stories with the community. It's really just a venue in which the students can give mahalo back to the community to show them that um, they understand they wouldn't be here you know, without the help of, of our Lahaina community. I think that makes it, it exceptionally special. This is Sophia Freddy from Lahaina Luna High School for Hiki Now. I am a koi maku aoi kumokupuni o mai maki kula vaina o kalama e ho o lau lea ana i kapiha maka hiki he kana kolu o ke kula kaya puni. Ke ho o kumu nei na ho mana i ke kai ki i pena nui maka paya o kolako ma papa. Ua kau na pū kana na ho mana mai ke ia wā a me kawai hiki mai ana i kou lako mana lima maka paya. Kau ia kawai e ho o kumu i ka hua a laila kau ia ke kai ki i maluna. Pi hoi hoi mako e ike i ka ho pena. Na Edoe Urban ame kapahana kanakolu na mea i kako o mai i koho lelo Hawaii ame ko Maui. Our next story takes us to the windward side of Oahu where students from Kalaheo High School reveal a piece of World War II history that lies hidden in a hillside. Looking at Kailua Town, you wouldn't necessarily know there was a World War II bunker still in use today. But right in our backyards, buried in the hillside, lies Battery 405 fortified with years of intriguing history. So right after the bombing at Pearl Harbor, the government figured that we needed more protection in Hawaii around the coastline, and they built this bunker and other bunkers as part of the seacoast defense system. This bunker was actually built in 1943 after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Bunker 405 was built with two of the guns that came off the ships at Pearl Harbor. When you take a ship gun and put it on land, the gun needs an elaborate cement slab all the way around the gun to disperse the shock wave. Guns fired at sea have enough power to move the entire ship several feet through the water, so you can only imagine the repercussions of firing a gun like that on land. Uh, outside here, the gun had a little building over the top of it, and the entrance to the bunker had a building over the top of it, and both buildings had a Japanese motif to it. And in those days, the idea the United States government had is if the guns were disguised like a Japanese village, that uh, the Japanese wouldn't bomb this facility. The main infrastructure of Bunker 405 was accompanied by another bunker at higher elevation called Fire Control. Up at this bunker, men would be scanning the horizon for threats. And he would have these books back then uh, one was all the shapes of the different ships uh, of all the countries in the world, and the other was the shapes and the types of airplanes and aircraft. With the help of these logbooks, someone would be able to identify any plane that might have flown in the sky. Having fulfilled its purpose in World War II, the bunker was decommissioned in 1950. The man that had it from 1950 when it was decommissioned to 2000 grew mushrooms here. His name was Ron Dizeroth and his hobby was growing mushrooms. He obtained two specific patents for certain types of mushrooms in Hawaii. Gary met Ron at a local restaurant in Kailua and was invited to visit the bunker. And I thought that this would be a really great place to have a data center or a place to back up data. Backed by Weller's determination and his dedication to put the bunker to good use, Battery 405 will soon be a fully functioning digital archive system. We started a process of cleaning the bunker out, putting in new electric, computer floor. The first room is complete now, and we're starting to market the uh, 
the data center. Upon its completion, the bunker will sit on Kalaheo Hillside as a symbol of Kailua's strength and resilience. This has been Ashley Stankovitz from Kalaheo High School for Hikino. Next, students from Molokai High School on the Friendly Isle show us how to make paint with a substance they have plenty of. Did you know that paint is made from two main ingredients? Pigment and binder. A binder is a liquid medium and pigment is a very fine powder, just like red dirt. And today, we're going to show you how to make red dirt into paint. So, let's get started. Okay guys, here we are in our studio. And what we'll be using to make our red dirt paint is clear acrylic medium as our binder. And we'll be sifting red dirt as our pigment. Now, the first step we're going to do is filter our red dirt. So, I'm going to use a 200 micron sifter to get the smaller particles to make a smooth and even paint. Once we finish sifting or filtering our red dirt, we will have a nice and smooth pigment that I'm going to put in a jar for safekeeping. So next, we're going to use a second jar with three cups of acrylic medium. If you want to make a smaller batch, the mixture is about even 50% depending on how thick you want your paint. Now that we have our binder in our bucket, we can add pigment to it. I'll be using a hand mixer to mix our paint. This saves us time and assures our paint mixes well. You can do this by hand or with any mixer. Here's my friend Ronnie using the red dirt in her painting. The paint can be thinned with water and mixed with other acrylic paint to tint, shade, and add contrast to your painting. If you're selling your work, people love to bring back something that will remind them of their visit. Have fun, stay creative. Mahalo for watching. This is Dominic Bumatai from Molokai High School for Hiki no. We take you now to the Eva district of Oahu, where students from James Campbell High School introduce us to a young man with a horn. We're here today at James Campbell High School to put the spotlight on the president of the James Campbell Band, Jake Hirsch. His incredible prowess with the saxophone has earned him a place at the prestigious Berklee College of Music in Boston. And today we've had the privilege of sitting down with him for an interview about his past and future as a musician in Hawaii. My main instrument is the tenor saxophone. Um, I also play guitar in the jazz band. But saxophone is really my voice and it's, it's something that lets me speak musically and helps me connect with other people and I, I want to take it further in life. Jake was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana to a military family. Hawaii is the 11th place he's lived in so far. Being a military kid and living in Hawaii, you know, at first I, I felt a lot like an outsider. I felt very out of place and out of touch with the way that people speak, the food. Um, it, it was definitely not what I had seen before, what I'd seen when I was here on vacation or on TV. I got into so many different styles of music just because I moved here. Before, I'd, I hardly knew anything. I just knew a couple artists that I really dig. A different genre of music wasn't the only thing Jake discovered after moving to Hawaii. This music, it's, it's not just, here's an instrument, play it. It's, you gotta get immersed in the world of it. It's not about just showing off. It's not about being better than someone else. It's about sharing what you love with other people. The highlight of everything, you know, I'd, I've had a dream since middle school, since about eighth grade. Um, to get accepted into the Berklee College of Music in Boston and I stressed so hard I, I didn't think I was gonna make it because I've moved around so much and my uh, my playing is actually has a lot of holes in it just because I've gone through so many different programs and not settled down in one specific program. Jake began to lose sight of his future until he met his band instructor and mentor Ryan Murakami. I settled down I found a a good and an amazing instructor, a really amazing instructor, and um, he just took me that much higher. Um, and I came out 
getting accepted into Berkeley and I'm gonna attend for the fall semester. So that's probably my proudest achievement. This is Jacob Roy from James Campbell High School for Hiki no. We are back here in Makawao in the heart of upcountry Maui at Kalama Intermediate School. This is the garden area where every sixth grader takes one semester of agriculture. Over the last few years, students have researched and grown a wide variety of plants from strawberries, papayas, and kalo to koa kukui trees and more. This year, students built a chicken coop and sold eggs along with other products from the garden. Our final story takes us to the island of Kauai, where students from Kapa'a High School follow a pair of long-distance runners who bring a whole new meaning to the phrase brotherly love. My brother Jason and I are going to run a half marathon. Are you ready? You think you, that's 13 miles. That's double what we did. Ever since high school, Joshua Loretta has wanted to run in a marathon. His younger brother Jason is helping him to fulfill that dream. We decided to do these runs after being inspired by Dick and Rick Hoyt. He's been actually running with his son who has cerebral palsy in triathlons, marathons, all these different races for a number of years already. I, my ability, I'm not my disability, highlights someone's capabilities, someone's human abilities. It's a campaign that Josh and I sort of thought about um, when we decided to run marathons. If a person can't communicate, but they can show how to love, how to laugh, like that's, that's the most important part in life. I think the number one hardship or the number one difficulty for someone with special needs is breaking that barrier that uh, society has, that misconception that because you have special needs or because you have a diagnosis that you are limited to certain things. With my brother, people automatically think that he can't understand what people are saying or that he can't really move about. What people don't understand is that um, they're all there, they're consciously there, their cognitive abilities are still there. Um, they just can't maybe speak or walk. I like to swim and go bowling. I love listening to music. He likes to just go to the mall um, and just hanging out at Starbucks or having lunch or, or just, just hanging out doing brother, brotherly things. He comes to my room and wants to sleep in so he'll tell me to you know, lay him on my bed and, and he can sleep in. You like these? Yeah? The Illoretta brothers have motivated many people to speak up and share their support for what they are doing. The boys, the Illoretta brothers, definitely make a difference. They have inspired me. I am so touched by what they do each day. And for them to complete their dream and their accomplishment is amazing. When asked what message they would give to someone going through similar difficulties, Josh and Jason wanted to tell everyone. Don't give up on their dream and just go for IT. The moments that you sacrifice, things that you sacrifice for, uh, and the moments you spend with this person, that is making a difference in their lives. That is making their world feel less small. This is Kiara Weatherington from Kapa'a High School for Hikino. This is where our journey ends to Upcountry Maui and this Hiki No episode. Just keep in mind that these stories were produced by student storytellers. We have enjoyed sharing these stories and hope you have enjoyed watching them as well. Tune in next week for more proof that Hawaii's young people, Hiki No. Can do!
broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.